What it do, homies? It's your boy, David. I'm back today. We back with some more casual geographic. This time we're checking out how nature's underdog took over the world. I believe this video is about foxes. I know nothing about foxes. Let's go ahead, shut up and turn it up. That's a goaded song. What does the fox say? This intro is amazing. What does the fox say? <laughs> That's pretty accurate Hi, to the song right there. Hi. All right, pop quiz. What is the most widespread carnivore on earth? Out of all of those animals in the world, which one managed to spread further and thrive in more places than any other? Hmm. This isn't rhetorical, by the way. Comment your answer. I'm actually curious. All votes in? Okay, good. It's the red fox. I don't know when it happened, but somewhere in the history of Earth, there was a subplot where the fox took over the world, and they have not let up since. Today, there's about 23 flavors of fox seasoning this big ball of dirt and water, flavors. with well over 40 subspecies on their roster. And they are everywhere. From griefing gardens in the suburbs, to pickpocketing polar bears in the north, to murking koalas in Australia. Trust and believe we don't get to that. Not you can griefing. find some Vulpes variant virtually anywhere in the world that isn't the ocean or Antarctica. And the biggest flex of the foxes is the red fox. Despite being in the weight class of a small dog, no other mammalian carnivore owns more real estate. Mm -hmm. And even though they're invited to the carnivore cookout, technically they're omnivores, which means they eat, and I do not say this lightly, everything. Rabbits, rodents, birds, frogs, worms, fish, crabs, clams, insects, Humans. lizards, eggs, fruits, plants, garbage, cat food, dog food, carry on, and I don't mean the bag, and actual feces. Literally their whole meal plan is, if it doesn't kill them first, they'll eat it. Foxes are also oh, wow. able to exploit the Earth's magnetic fields in order to catch bodies. You've probably seen this thing foxes do where they'll swan dive into a pile of snow. So cute. It's called mousing, and foxes are able to use magnetic fields as this kind of internal GPS, and they cross-reference that with a broken sense of hearing to figure out exactly where their target is and exactly where they land a critical hit. Foxes pretty much have a real-life wall hack, and they're one of the few animals to hunt like this. They're also smart enough to wow. memorize the migration patterns of certain species of birds, meaning they know the exact time to pull up for free and easy protein. Foxes also manage to figure out the same with some turtles, since timing it right after they lay their eggs and peace out means low effort omelets. Call that over easy. And arguably, no place has foxed around and found out more than Australia. When it comes to making an informative video while throwing in a couple of one-liners and jokes, casual geography, this, this guy might just be undefeated. Because way back in the 1800s, Europeans airdropped red foxes to the land down under for the sport of fox hunting. Evidently, the foxes weren't about to go down like that. To the point where a couple years ago, it's estimated that over 7 million foxes exist in Australia as a perpetual middle finger to the settlers that thought they'd be light work. Some unhinged foxes even learned to climb trees in order to snatch baby koalas and sugar gliders, proving that any animal that gets introduced to Australia will inevitably become a problem. And now, foxes and feral cats are like the Kobe and Shaka putting too, right? native Australian animals on a shirt. That ability to adapt means foxes are one of the very few predators that do better in cities. Not as well, not almost as well, no, better. Today, the highest mm. density of foxes living in Britain are shacking it up in the city. In some neighborhoods, you'll find twice as many fox families than you would in the countryside, and 200 times as many than in some desolate moors. So, more a boggy area, especially one that is peaty and dominated by grasses. So, so Britain, y'all got some pet, so pet foxes. It's probably pretty normal down there. And even though they get straight up bullied by bigger canines, foxes don't rely on a pack structure the same way wolves do. And they have enough pretty privilege to dodge the smoke everyone seems to have for coyotes. It also helps that they're nocturnal and move like introverts. Mama Fox will go out of her way to clean the dead they're area invincible. so well that the average person can walk right past it and not even realize there's a whole family underground. And just like with birds, foxes will study and memorize the schedule of humans in the area and only come out when it's least active. They'll even take advantage of garbage schedules so they know exactly when to come root through your trash. And they'll even take note of what times you often feed your pets so that they can steal their share. Right. And, you and, and so, so, but, you know, this type of behavior and everything is the reason why we've been able to uh, domesticate, like, you know, four-legged animals such as dogs, cats, and whatnot. You may never even notice. Depending on where you live, you can probably count on one hand how many foxes you've seen in your neighborhood, even if you've lived around them your entire life. And lucky for them, they happen to be just cute enough to not have to worry about getting their existence nuked like outside some of, of their a, predators. Outside of a zoo. Speaking of which, let's talk about the many enemies of the fox. You got wolves, coyotes, cougars, lynxes, birds of prey, bears, wolverines, cars, and many, many more. Because the one bad thing about being a fox is everything on the census either wants to eat you or wants to kill you because you eat the same things. Cars. In fact, the first and sometimes last enemy they'll make is their family. 
Fox Cubs will fight their siblings off rip in order to establish a hierarchy. And it's not the cute Disney play fighting I used to think it was. 20% of Fox kids born will never leave the den. It's just straight violence out the womb. I can't even say it's on site since baby foxes live the Helen Keller experience for the first two weeks of their life. Lucky for them, foxes often mate for life and bring up the kids together. I mentioned this in the Father's Day episode last video, but fox fathers will hide food around the den in these little pantries in order to teach his kids how to find food for themselves. I want you to keep that pantry thing in mind, we're gonna come back to that. Fox cubs have a couple months of a grace period before they have to go out and figure out life on their own. Lucky for them, they're part of the most unfairly versatile group of animals you'll ever see. Like, did you know foxes I mean, can climb trees? They no, can I eat mean, everything, like, fully scale so... that, John. The gray fox has been seen ascending over 70 feet up into a tree, and they're one of the few foxes that flex retractable claws, which allows gray foxes to avoid conflict with predators like coyotes. Go ahead and ask cheetahs how important that is. Tree climbing only proves that foxes are just cat software marrying dog hardware. A cat dog, if you will. And it shows that there isn't a lot of real estate on Earth show. that a fox can't claim. And no fox proves this more than my personal favorite, the Arctic fox. Because this igloo puppy has zero business surviving the out name here. Is just Not so only cool. is it cold enough to get one shot by wind, the Arctic fox also has ops like wolves and polar bears to worry about. And since pretty much anything goes in Satan's ice rink, both of them will not hesitate to eat a fun-sized fox. And it really be your own kind, since another unlikely menace to an ice fox's life is the red fox. Because as small as they are, the red fox is still two to three times bigger than their snowy cousins. And yes, red foxes will 100% murk and eat their weaker relatives if it means surviving. So you'd think it'd be curtains for any pint-sized predator that even tries out here. Well, about that. Don't think for a second arctic foxes don't have their tricks too. They'll strategically follow polar bears for miles just to clean off whatever they don't finish. Hmm. We're talking about a house cat sized fox slipping food from the literal biggest land predator on the planet while also managing to stay far enough to avoid getting their consciousness confiscated permanently. These baby face survivors will even resort to scavenging the polar bear's food except after it's already been digested and taken to south exit. Yeah they're a different kind of potty mouth but the arctic fox has a secret to never having to miss a meal. These Q-tip terriers have a pantry system where they'll bury any extra food in a network of underground dens, which can stretch across 20 miles. And it's these food supplies that keeps the Arctic fox's pulse going in the dead of winter. There was even one time where researchers uncovered a fox cellar containing wow. 38 birds, 4 rabbits, and about a dozen eggs. Oh, it's hoarding on a thousand, but it's what keeps them Euro-stepping death and ghosting the Grim Reaper. <laughs> this cotton-colored canine has one more trick too. Coming in all-white helps the glacier jockey cosplay as a snowdrift in order to avoid predators. But once the sun finally makes an appearance like an absentee father on tax day, the longer daylight triggers hormonal changes. Changes that causes them to change coats. They go from whiter than a party in the Hamptons to a thinner coat that matches the tundra the Arctic wow. turns into. And it's all these abilities that allows the chameleon of foxes to live in one of the most unlivable places on Earth. And so does the smallest fox in the world. On the other side of the spectrum, the fennec fox survives in a very different kind of desert. It's the smallest canine in the world and could probably get bodied in by a chihuahua. World. Those canine. massive ears are good for three things. Increasing their overall surface area to help keep them cool, the same way elephant ears do. Helping them pinpoint the insects, lizards, and rodents on its grocery list even while they're underground. And for looking absolutely adorable doing it. Like I said, Aww. foxes are broken. Especially since fennecs can live off the moisture they get from food and by licking the dew from their dens. Not only that, but their kidneys are actually designed to function off very little actual water. Making this travel-sized fox one of the few animals able to survive in the desert without drinking actual water. Not a and few. as a human, you tap out from life after about three days of a water fast. Tap out. In fact, where the fennec fox may never have to drink at all, the average adult should drink about 48 ounces a day. That's just over two of these. Which can often feel like a chore, but Arab's flavor pods makes hey, it way nice easier. Transition. These pods do actually gallon manage a to day trick your brain myself. by using scent flavors traveling to your brain to replicate the taste of whatever pod you chose. Whole time you're just drinking plain water. Just fill the bottle up, pull the pod to activate the flavor, hold the bottle upright, and yeah, that, that that's pretty much it. My personal favorite's mango passion it's actually fruit, pretty but smart. you have a variety of options like watermelon, peach, cucumber, that orange, apple, and a bunch more. And again, there's no calories, no sugar. It's just you gaslighting your brain since about 80% of taste is actually dependent on smell. Now, I've never had a problem drinking enough water. Huh. I have a question. Those of you that were stricken with the uh, pandemic and everything, people who lost their taste and their smell, is it is it because you might have lost your taste because you lost your smell? You didn't really lose your taste? And you probably lost both, but I didn't, when I got, I got it twice. I didn't lose my taste or my smell. My whole entire body felt like when your feet go to sleep it was not fun. Uh, but that's interesting. I didn't know that about the uh, taste, you know, the smell and everything. Water, but after deciding to try to cut down on sodas and juices, I can honestly say Arab has come in clutch more than a few times. And you know this isn't just an ad. I literally tell y'all to drink water in every single video. And now I at can help end, with that. So yeah, make sure you does. check out Arab and their many flavor products in the link in the description. 
Use the code CASUALGO15 for 15% off. And like always, make sure y'all staying hydrated out there. Hydration isn't a problem for a pocket-sized sandbox. Nice transition. Oh, and by the way, since their kidneys are always on desert mode, Fenix Fox Pee is super concentrated and smells like pee-pee Le Pew. And since foxes will pee on any surface, two hours with a Fennec under your roof and your house will smell like a skunk orgy. So yeah, don't be confusing them for good pets. You shouldn't confuse them for a pale fox either. That's offensive to them. They look similar, but the pale fox is slightly bigger, has a smaller range, and is overall the less clouded dupe of the Fennec. And if you take a quick trip a couple hundred miles down south, you'll find the bat-eared fox. Unlike the rest of the fox family, their meal plan contains almost entirely insects, with most of their protein coming from termites. Though satellite dish ears allows it to eavesdrop on termite affairs before it packs them. They've even gone ahead and invested in extra teeth to help with their termite terminating tendencies. Bat ears also acts on fox like by living in packs, usually made of a mating pair and their children, kind of the same way wolf packs work. It's like a fox that slept through the lecture on how to fox 101, which actually makes a lot of sense since technically bat eared foxes aren't true foxes. There are 12 species that earn the title of true fox, and four of them we've already mentioned. The red fox, the arctic, the fennec, and the pale fox. Can't believe so Another true fox is the Tibetan fox. Go that face. No, I'm serious. That's exactly what they look like. Like a reborn human realizing reincarnation ain't always sweet. Or like nature got drunk and tried redrawing foxes strictly from memory and then uploaded it as a deer. Yeah, what? It's the only animal able to side-eye you while looking you dead in the <laughs> Bro, I got so many relatives that make that same face. Matter of fact, I think my wife makes that face, but only in certain situations. My daughter makes that face. Yo, that, I can't believe that's real. I can't believe that's real. In the face. A picture's worth a thousand words, and every image of a Tibetan fox tells a story of apathy, indifference, and a splash of contempt. Now, you might be wondering why this fox looks like an AI generated Renaissance painting. Some say it's to help them cope with a windy environment. Some say it's because their skulls are specialized for carnivory. I say God or nature, whoever did this to them, has a twisted sense of humor. Evidently, the Tibetan fox I'm does trying not. To also, you know like the it. whole coyote badger team up that we all love so much and can't get enough of? Apparently, the Tibetan fox has the same type of arrangement with Himalayan brown bears, where the bears will dig out pika burrows, that's a pika, and force them to run on land, where they get chased down by the fox. The fox isn't the digger the bear is, but the fox has better foot speed, so like any true dynamic duo, they cover each other's weaknesses, even if one of them looks allergic to oxygen. I'm gonna run through a couple more foxes real quick. We have Blanford's fox, found in the Middle East and Central Asia. They're easily the goats of foxes, able to scale anything short of 90 degrees and able to do the equivalent of a 10 foot box jump by leaping onto ledges. Hmm. There's the kit fox of the Southwest, like also cats. known as the San Joaquin fox, and they're Light basically skin. the American edition of the fennec fox. Light skin we fox. can't forget about the Corsac fox of the Mongolian steppe and Central Asian deserts. Then you got the Cape fox of South America and the slightly bigger Indian based Bengal fox. I was not kidding, unless your neighbors with a cast of happy feet, there's likely more foxes in your area than hot singles just dying to meet you. Foxes come in so many forms that they even have their equivalent of a shiny Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Cross Fox. It's actually a red fox with partial melanism. You know, the same thing that turns leopards and jaguars into black panthers. They're more common in Canada, where up to a third of the red fox population has this bimelanated alternate skin. And even the rarer Pokemon than them are silver the foxes, too. That's awesome. which is just a red fox with complete melanism, gang. Because yeah, red foxes aren't always red. Like I said, foxes gang. exist in many forms, but there's one final form not even they saw coming. Pets. That's right, there's a population of domestic foxes in the world as we speak. Basically, the lore goes this guy, Dmitry Belyaev, asked a question. How did we go from this apex predator to a lapdog? So he and graduate Ludmila Trut tried to see if they could replicate the wolf domestication process, except with foxes. They created a fox farm with 100 vixens and 30 males, and which foxes got to mate depended on which ones were the most tolerant of humans. The most human-friendly foxes fornicated, and this process repeated itself with the next generation. Essentially, they were selecting for traits that would make them the most fit for human companionship. And as the experiment wore on, the foxes went from not fearful of people, to tolerant of people, to actively seeking out people. Later generations would develop an affinity towards humans, sniffing and licking people, and even replacing the aggressive yips and shrieks with more passive whimpers and pants. Hmm. But what we weren't expecting was, as their personalities and attitudes towards people changed, so did their bodies. The more people-friendly foxes sported droopy ears and curled up tails which is pretty different from the upright ears and downwards pointed tails of their wild cousins. Wow. And after decades of successfully playing God with foxes, we now live in a world where you can adopt and own a pet silver fox. Now here's a part of the video where I tell you why you ain't ready for that. They poop and Wait. pee everywhere, and there isn't a surface in their uh, house they can't get to. You little shit. They scream, especially at night. Literally. They'll be finding out what the fox says while you're trying to count sheep. 
Not to mention you're probably gonna sacrifice furniture for their happiness. That combination adds up to a good chance you're up at 3 a.m. cleaning fox feces off the top of your fridge while cursing yourself for not just getting a hamster. You can probably find a way to make it work if you do the research and you're committed enough, but, and I'm gonna say this as many times as it's applicable, if you're that willing to sacrifice your sleep, sanity, and social life for a screaming, pooping, deratio of a creature, just have children. Cause foxes are great wild animals, but they can really be some mid as hell pets. But that's gonna do it for this I got video. Two Friendly reminder that I do have a book out. It's called 100 Animals That Can Redacted Kill You. Link in the description Redacted. if you're interested. That's pretty Shout cool. out to Arab for sponsoring this Merch. video. Shout Books. out to you all that's for awesome. watching this video. Drink water, wear sunscreen, I'll touch grass, hug your parents, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. In the next one. Hey. Oh yeah, happy birthday to me. Oh, happy birthday. I love you. Are you my porky potato? Are you my porky potato? Hi. Hi. Yoink. Oh <laughs> Yoink. Hey, I had no idea for him up to enjoy the chaos. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea that much information about foxes and, and I... Honestly, I don't even know if I knew that people had them as pets, but it's crazy. The evolution animals can go through uh, through breeding and, and attempts to domestication. And like I said, weren't dogs, aren't they just domesticated wolves, if I remember correctly? There's a movie or something like that out there that talks about that. But anyways, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe. Dave's out.